Well, the next project off the pile is to put a double door in this door opening to the laundry closet. And the first thing to do is to try to figure out how big the door frame is going to be. I have a shim right here, and the bottom of the door frame is resting up against the wall. This plaster wall with corner bead, unfortunately, is not very plumb. It's about three-eighths of an inch. The original wall is leaning this way. And on the other side, the good news is this particular wall seems to be very plumb. So I can get away with mounting this door frame exactly up against the plaster wall. And when you measure from that corner over to here, instead of being 60 inches, it's 59 and 5 eighths. So I'm losing 3 eighths of an inch on the opening. And the two doors that I purchased are exactly 30 inches wide. And you're going to need an eighth of an inch or so all the way around each door. So I'm going to lose at least another 3 eighths of an inch, maybe 4 eighths or a half inch for the spacing around the door. And I think the easiest thing to do would be to just trim the doors down a little bit. I could pick up some of that by removing the lower part of the wall here. Have to cut into the corner bead and the plaster and that's going to be a particularly messy job all in an attempt to pick up you know three eighths of an inch or so and I just don't think it's worth it. This is the header for what will be the new door frame. I scored a line by taking a half inch off and then I realized that wasn't really the best way to do it so I'm measuring the full distance I measured it to be 59 and 5 eighths, but I'm going to take a quarter inch more off of that to 59 and 3 eighths, which is right here. I made this router plane quite a while ago. I have a series of videos on it. Now I can obviously special order such a door, but since this guy is not quite a standard size, it's going to cost many hundreds of dollars. Prices these days are really out of control. I can buy door slabs, hinges, and magnetic latches off the rack, so to speak, for a bit over 100 bucks. The frame can be reused, so I'm looking to save a few hundred or more by building it, and hopefully I'll end up with exactly what I want. I made a separate video on this router hinge mortising jig, so I'm not going to go into a lot of details about what it is. But if you want to see how I built it and how it works a little better, check out that video. To use the jig on the door frame side, you line the top edge up with the inside edge of the door frame. The paint edge marks the spot in this case. And here's the bit that in the router. I'll use the two hinges, the gauge to set the depth. Well, that's a pretty good fit, but you know, I think the hinge is a touch proud of the surface. So I'm going to set the router bit depth a teeny bit deeper and do another pass. And for a test fit, it seems good. It tipped a little bit on me on that one, so I had a little bit of a schmutz mark. Will not affect the performance. So I set up for the next uh, routing, and the important thing when doing double doors is to make gosh darn sure you're creating mirror images of the associated pieces. So this is the first one I routed. This is the bottom of the left side, and this is the top of the right side. And on my jig I have it labeled top here to keep myself hopefully more oriented. Heard it said that the number 75 is one of Stanley's most useless planes, but works fine for this application. Alright, and here's the right piece of the frame, and the hinges fit very well. So I'm happy with that. So as always, you don't want to make a mistake on the build, so I labeled this door face as right. And I've lined up the right uh, door frame that I just mortised to mark more or less where the hinge mortise on the door is going to go. Again, this is all in an attempt to make sure I don't cut something backwards. Many years ago, I made this door stand. It's just a 2x4 that you cut a wedge in. And the door will sit in there and you drive the wedge in to hold the door upright. Probably haven't used this thing in, I don't know, 10 years. 
but every now and then it's just what you need to do a job. And there's the door stand in use, holding the door pretty well. So because the doors had an eighth of an inch offset sitting below the top of the frame, and on the door side you line up the jig to the overhang of the door with the gap you want, in my case about an eighth of an inch, I'm using this paint stirring stick as a spacer. By lifting the jig up an eighth of an inch you're effectively lowering the door an eighth of an inch. And as a sanity check, bring the door frame into the picture and line up that pencil line with the top of the jig, you can see that the door is hanging about an eighth of an inch below the top of the door frame. And then I can corroborate that the hinges are lining up where I think they should be. So another feature I just discovered is I routed this mortise and that fits perfectly. And this is the hinge I've been basing everything on. And I'm trying to put a brand new hinge in here. And I can't get this into the mortise. It's just too tight. So that's a feature. You pay more for that. But I have a self-centering bit. And what's cool is this particular set of hinges came with five screws that are this long which is nice. When you buy a door, a lot of times they come with these dinky little screws that barely make it through the door frame. So it's nice to have some screws with a little more meat on them. And they give you one <laughs> very long screw. So every hinge gets an extra long screw. And just for reference, these are the hinges that I'm using. Had to do a little massaging on some of these mortises. Just a little too snug. So 10 or 15 passes with the edge of the file. So far has been good enough. And at this point I'm just putting in these teeny screws just to hold everything in place. I will replace them with longer screws when I go to install the frame. And since I had to massage a couple of these mortises I could get the hinges installed, I'm going to hedge my bets a little bit by making the jig a little bit bigger for my final set of mortises. Here are the three pieces for the door frame. They each have two coats of primer on it. They'll be a heck of a lot easier to paint now than after it's installed. So by far the most critical thing when hanging a door is that the three hinges or two hinges, whichever the case may be, have to be perfectly plumb. So I have to get this piece of the door frame, which is holding hinges, plumb. The wall leans out a little bit more here at the top than it does down there at the bottom. And I have a threshold to contend with, and I want the frame to line up more or less with the threshold. But critically, this absolutely has to be as plumb as I can get it. And I think that's pretty good there. The bubble's in between the lines, and if I try to skew it much more than that, I'm going to have a tough time getting the trim and everything to fit right. Okay, I have the right side of the door frame secured with three long screws. One of them is here in the middle with a shim behind it. But on this hinge, that's an extra long screw with shims behind it and at the top an extra long screw. The wall is proud over here, a few millimeters, and that's kind of bugging me a little bit. And the wall bulges out in this area. And then by the time you get down low, the wall is flush with the door frame, and the door frame sitting a little proud of the threshold. And this side of the door frame went well. This side of the wall happens to be very plumb and straight. I cut a quarter inch off the bottom of the door using my circular saw jig right here. I don't have to be too careful with the bottom of the door. You're not really ever going to see it unless you get down on your hands and knees and press your cheek to the floor. Here's uh, one of the bottoms that I cut off. I have to cut a half inch off the door and I could possibly do it on the table saw with my extended fence jig that I have a video on but I decided I'm going to try to use my track saw. I think that's a better solution and I have a video on my homemade track saw if you want to check that out. But on an actual door, the side that's leading into the door frame is tapered back a little bit. So this surface is the front of the door as it would swing out toward you. And that means on this edge, the lower edge, is going to be a little bit cut away more than the upper edge. So there's going to be a little bit of a taper where more material is removed from the bottom as you're looking at it. And I'm going to take a little bit more off the bottom than the top. And from what I understand, that angle is about 5 to 7 degrees. It's very shallow, but without it, uh, this edge 
might bind into the door frame before the door gets closed. Once again, I'm really happy that I have a track saw here. Just keeping the saw dead against the fence is just one less thing I have to worry about when I'm making a cut. By far the easiest way to put a taper on the two edges is with a block plane. Well, I can't really stand back far enough to show you the whole thing, but the two doors are in and fitting quite nicely. I have a teeny bit of a gap. I planned on an eighth of an inch. I think it came out a little less than that on the left and the right, which means the gap between the door came out a little bigger than I wanted. I was aiming for an eighth of an inch, and I think down at the bottom it came out closer to three sixteenths. So that's not bad. Well, here it is finished up to show you the door completely done. Now through the magic of video, this may have appeared to be pretty easy, but in reality, I had to adjust the shims behind the frame and put some cardboard spacers behind some of the hinges to get it to sit just right. It's a little trickier with double doors as the two slabs have to meet in the middle just right or it'll look a little funny. With a single door, if it's a bit out of whack, you don't really see it as the door frame stands proud. How I handled the uneven wall was I cut some thin strips of wood, an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths, and a quarter inch and I put pieces of it over here to laminate on top of the door frame so that when I attached the casing it was following the wall pretty well. A little paint and a little bit of caulking and it came out fine. I also have a video where I show you how I painted these doors. There might be a trick or two in there for you so check it out. Well this is about as far back as I can get to give you an idea of what these doors look like. They came out great and I appreciate you stopping by as always. I hope you got something out of this video, maybe picked up a trick or two. And as always, I ask you to take care, stay safe, and keep an eye out for the next one.